welcome everyone. Uh, my name is Giovanna D'Alessio. I'm the co-author of Equacy, uh, a human-centered and hierarchy-free um, organizational design and operating system, and also partner in Asteris, which is an international uh, organizational development firm. I am Simona Liguoro, and I am the HR director of Nespresso Italy. Okay, fantastic. So today we are really thrilled. So let me let me share the a few slides. Okay, so today we are really thrilled to share the story of how a an HR director is achieving a small step after small steps, uh, and also a team after team, a deep organizational culture transformation. Um, it's a story of courageous decisions, a story of trust. Um, also a story of, uh, of an alliance between consultant and, and, client, and client. So Simone and I will tell the story of how Nespresso introduced self-organization with the, with the help, uh, as I told you, of these few slides. We will leave ample time for questions and reflection at the end. So um, if you have questions, just you know, uh, put, put them on hold or write them somewhere or even in the chat, and then we'll, uh, we'll answer at the end of the um, of the presentation. So, okay. uh, Simona, would you like to yeah. start? Yeah. Uh, first of all, let me introduce you a bit of Nespresso. Uh, everyone probably knows Nespresso, our coffee, and especially George Clooney, uh, for women especially, but maybe not all of you know that uh, Nespresso uh, was born in 1986, and we opened the door in uh, Italy in uh, 1999. Uh, today, we have more than uh, 800 people with 70 shops, and uh, our uh, most uh, iconic uh, sales channel is our uh, boutique, where everyone can enjoy the full uh, coffee experience. But we are very strong in our e-commerce, customer service, and also B2B channel uh, to enjoy our coffee in bar, hotels, and uh, offices. Uh, the story we would like to tell you today starts uh, three years ago. Uh, I went to Giovanna, to Asteris, uh, to ask for help. Uh, at that time, my boss uh, proposed me uh, a part-time uh, mission in Lausanne, and uh, I needed, uh, from one side, 50% uh, of my time back to perform the two roles. Uh, but in parallel, together with the, the, the team, we were uh, we were discussing about uh, the need of an upgrade. Uh, we were in in a in a way sure that we uh, could do uh, more and better. Uh, I was sure that the team member of the HR team could be definitely more uh, autonomous. They could take more decision. Uh, without uh, need of my help, help. And in general, we could be uh, a more performing and uh, motivated uh, team. I knew about uh, self-organization and uh, I thought that uh, this could be a good way uh, really to reach my aspiration. And thanks. To yeah. yeah. Now, today we will tell the story of, the, of this uh, implementation. Okay, so let me take it from there, from here. So Equacy is a hierarchy-free organizational design and uh, an operating system, uh, very similar to other self-organization uh, TL systems is based on a network of self-organizing teams. Uh, we, the, the authors are change management experts who have supported uh, corporations like uh, Nespresso, Pirelli, Ferrero, uh, Luxottica, and many other large uh, companies since 2002. And in 2017, we designed Equacy um, in a way to make self-organization scalable and effective for, for big size companies. Um, as our background is rooted in the human potential movement, our purpose was to develop a, a really a real human-centered work environment where people could express their potential and thrive as, as human beings. Um, so equity uh, comes from the late Latin equum, that means equal, just, and it is based on five principles. Uh, first of all, a purpose and values driven. Uh, purpose and values act as a roadmap 
help their employees taking business decisions, being inspired and uh, establishing customer loyalty. Um, the second one is self-organizations, of course, so that individuals and teams can define their own purpose, their own goals, take decisions and address the problems in, in full autonomy. We have uh, transparency as a, as a principle because when information and knowledge are openly shared, employees are encouraged to contribute to the process of delivering decisions and solutions. And moreover, transparency allows people to, to gain a better understanding of how they are contributing to the success of the organization because everyone can see what all other teams or all other individuals are doing. Equality, because we believe that we need to avoid any form of subordination if we want to create an environment where people can self-organize, self-direct and unleash their full potential. And adaptivity, or the, the ability to quickly adapt to market or, or social changes. Um, starting from radical simplicity in processes iterative prototyping uh, as a mindset and also uh, the way of uh, executing uh, things and making sure that you know roles strategy goals accountabilities are all dynamic and regularly checked to be upgraded uh, or modified yeah uh, in espresso we started by uh, implementing a quasi in one pilot team the hr team and uh, the implementation was uh, realized uh, to, through a series of uh, workshop uh, with uh, the entire team, of course, uh, and one equacy facilitation, facilitator. We uh, worked for, uh, let's say, nine months, more or less. Uh, and the, the two big things we needed to do, especially at the beginning, was to shift the mindset of the team member. Uh, from one side, the uh, people that had the role of manager uh, at the time uh, had uh, to question uh, their uh, hierarchical uh, uh, role. One of the key points was, uh, of course, to let uh, the control on other go. Uh, and from the other side, the team members needed to uh, do another change that was uh, uh, to rethink completely their uh, idea of responsibility. Uh, because in equity, every uh, person has full res responsibility in his or her domain. And for those people that are not used to that, uh, it's a quite difficult exercise to start living in a world where accountability is the key word of everything. Uh, we introduced some uh, equacy practices um, that helped us to uh, create, first of all, uh, the dynamic roles, uh, a way to take better decision, uh, a new way using the OKR uh, to manage uh, goals and performance in general, and then uh, start really focus uh, ourselves on team performance instead of uh, the individual performance. Uh, and I mean, in, in the following section, we will uh, be able to uh, share with you how the team uh, reacted and how the team is performing uh, now after uh, three years. Uh, as a team, the, the first step we did was to identify the team purpose, as Giovanna said uh, before, uh, that of course is a purpose aligned with the company purpose. Uh, and this uh, step was key really to um, share among the team members uh, the why our HR team exists. And in, in this way, we create a, a very solid base for alignment and engagement uh, because we felt for the first time really to share a, a really collective and uh, inspiring uh, common goal. We then um, developed the team charter that define uh, how we uh, wanted to work uh, together. Thanks. And then we introduced the OKRs. A, many of you know it, it's a dynamic way to set objectives and key results that aligns the whole organization because the individual OKR shall contribute to the team's OKR and the team's OKR shall contribute to the companies. Um, if there is anyone uh, here not familiar 
with OKR, just a, a couple of facts. Uh, objectives and key results must be limited in numbers be, because they will represent the, the, just the strategic focus of the team or the individual. They must be public. Uh, and also they shall be updated frequently, like very often weekly, uh, and reviewed also very often like quarterly to ensure adaptability to the internal and external changes. And when employees have their own OKRs, they have very clear expectations. Um, and they also have the context of why their work is important. Yes, and introducing OKR in our team really uh, changed our uh, life for different reasons. The first one was that uh, your objective is always linked to the team objective. And this means that if you do not reach your objective, the entire team doesn't. Uh, and this is a, a really uh, different aspect from previous uh, way, uh, because every, every person does anything uh, she or he can uh, to achieve the goal. The, the, the thing that is even more important is that uh, if you have any issue uh, in achieving the goal of that quarter, the entire team is completely available to help and to support. And this uh, gives to the team a high, high level of uh, teamwork. Um, the second big uh, change was uh, that uh, every person completely owns uh, that piece of, of objective. And this means that every person feel completely responsible for each objective and uh, everyone take all possible care to uh, ensure that the goal is achieved. And third, uh, in every moment, each individual know uh, the personal contribution to the main objective. Uh, and in this case, the sense of purpose is uh, really incredible. And finally, team members developed and clarified their dynamic roles. The dynamic roles make it clear for anyone in the organization which person has the authority for a particular uh, project or, or task and what he or she does. Because of that, roles are and really important reference for the everyday activities. And, and also, as I shared before, roles are dynamic. So they evolve according to the situation, the customer changing needs or, or new team guidelines. Yeah, and, and to define uh, the dynamic roles in the team, uh, each team member uh, have to go through a very quick question that probably you have never asked yourself. Uh, at least I, I didn't. Uh, that, that are, what are my different role with the different stakeholders? Stakeholder. So it's like to slice a bit your, your role full of activities. The other quick question is, uh, there is something I do that is different from what everyone else in the team is doing. And thanks to this exercise, I uh, realized that I had some uh, really special role that uh, until then I really underestimated in a way. Uh, I can give you a couple of examples. The first one is very simple. I realized that I was uh, the only person in the team participating to the uh, HR director boards. And that, of course I knew that before, uh, but when you uh, realize that you uh, is the only person that can align the team on the company uh, future strategies, and that uh, it's only you can show the good work uh, done at local level to the HQ. Uh, and if you are evaluated versus this role, uh, you interpret the role in a completely uh, different uh, way. Um, another example uh, different from the first one I did is uh, um, is that uh, during the analysis, I realized that uh, uh, one of my uh, biggest strength was to uh, bring innovation and creativity to the project. Uh, the, the problem at the time was that I tended to do uh, that for every project, every activity, every initiative the HR team started. And uh, in some uh, occasion, this was definitely uh, useful. In uh, other, uh, it was uh, completely useless. 
thanks to, to this analysis, I created a specific role that I call uh, Innovation Catalyst. Uh, and I'm involved uh, only when in a project or an initiative, creativity and innovation are needed. In this way, um, uh, I can, in a way, express one of my uh, talent uh, without being uh, dysfunctional for the entire uh, team. Um, so thanks to all these practices, the team uh, demonstrate uh, an increase of uh, effectiveness, especially when the rapid change happen and affect the environment. Uh, first of all, the team member um, feel uh, free to propose change now. Uh, they, in a way, uh, integrated uh, in the DNA of the, of the team the uh, rapid prototyping uh, method uh, in order to uh, test uh, and learn uh, and, let's say, find a very quick uh, solution. The, the other thing is that the uh, team makes sure that any uh, element uh, of the our way of working, uh, from the role to the OKR uh, guidelines and priorities, are uh, and stay dynamic. This means that uh, they regularly evaluate uh, if the elements are uh, still relevant, uh, need an upgrade, uh, need a change, according to what happened in uh, the context where uh, we live. And plus, um, each team member uh, know that can take autonomous initiative to address a problem without uh, asking permission. Uh, or in case uh, uh, he or she need help, of course, can bring the issue uh, to the attention of the whole team to, let's say, uh, ask uh, for help. Well, team members also um, have, let's say, embedded the principle of good enough to try because its decision can be revised. Individual team members have the authority to make any decision pertaining their work with no need to ask for you know, the chain of command for permission. In, um, in terms of decision making, the team learned to apply constant decision making. Um, for those of you not familiar with consent, uh, the basic idea behind it is that decisions are made only when none of the members taking part of the discussion has a reason, substantial objection to that particular decision. Um, and constant decision-making is fast because the objections have to be really paramount, meaning they, they need to be serious enough to prevent a person from supporting the aim of the group. And secondly, they have to be reasoned. Yeah, uh, what I can add from a practical point of view, the consent decision making methodology uh, really, um, first of all, gave us a strong team method to interact when complex uh, decisions have to be made. Uh, the second big thing is, is, is that uh, the consent decision making stress um, even more in a way the idea of uh, uh, personal responsibility. Uh, in fact, the idea presenter can, uh, uh, is free to propose any, any idea, and, and this allows all the people of the team to dream big. Uh, the proposal can, uh, of course, decide to bring uh, uh, the, the project if there are no valid objective, ob objections, sorry. and in a way, the test and learn approach become part of the mindset of the team. And this helps uh, the team member to increase their uh, uh, agility, uh, considering that every decision can be revised, adjust, or reassessed if needed in, uh, in a second step. Okay. Let's talk about performance. Now the team now understands that team performance is more important than individual performance. So team members are committed to really make a winning team. Um, also, uh, there is no internal competition because team members don't need to fight for the promotion. Uh, each person provided that they have you know, the, the, the relevant skills can experiment with roles where they can express their potential uh, as they wish. Yeah. 
uh, the, the, another practice that is uh, really changing the daily life of the team is the new meeting protocols. Uh, we established two uh, kind of regular meetings, the operational meeting that take place once per week, uh, give the team the opportunity to uh, know in every moment uh, of the year how the project are progressing and how the team is near or far uh, to achieve its uh, goals. Uh, then we have another kind of meeting that is called governance meeting that uh, take place uh, once per month. Uh, and if you are very expert, uh, even less. Uh, and they put in practice a, a fundamental uh, uh, principle of uh, equacy, that is that every team member uh, have the power and the right to contribute to important decisions that uh, affect the entire team. Uh, this is really uh, key to um, make uh, um, the team member feel uh, completely involved uh, and committed. Um, this is a, a, an important element of the model, uh, the responsibility uh, for uh, effective meetings that not, does not rely only on the manager as it, it is in a traditional uh, context. Uh, but uh, with each team member. And you can see uh, suddenly uh, people that was distracted uh, during the meetings become uh, uh, attentive, uh, participatory and, uh, and very, very active and the energy change completely. Thanks. Well, in the IPOC system, feedback and feed forward can come from any peer, from any place in the organization. Uh, it can be spontaneous or, or requested. And, and again, it is public, like a sort of organizational trip advisor. Mm. Yeah. And during the year, you uh, collect uh, a lot of data, a lot of feedback. Uh, you have the OKR, so you have some percentage of uh, how much you achieved your objective. Then you collect feedback from uh, stakeholders. Uh, about key projects and activities. So we use a lot of survey when we do uh, important project uh, to measure how much value we uh, brought to the organization. Uh, then you receive feedback from uh, uh, the team that can be about your uh, effectiveness, that can be related about uh, the effectiveness in which you perform your role. Uh, or also related to the value you are uh, showing to the team and to the organization. And um, thanks to all this uh, feedback, you uh, are aware in every moment of the year uh, about your performance. Uh, at the end of the year, you are able to propose uh, by yourself an evaluation rating because you have a lot of data and a lot of evidence. Uh, our uh, uh, annual uh, calibration, of course, is, uh, is, is quite special. We are all together in a room. Uh, every, and it's not done, of, of course, uh, it's, it's uh, done with the entire team, not manager and the employee, like it is in the traditional uh, environment. Um, every person brings the data collected during the year. Uh, and that are related to the effectiveness of the project managed, the feedback of, from the team members, stakeholders, OKRs, etc. And each person uh, arrived proposing their own final evaluation. Uh, all the other have the role to give uh, feedback, uh, add information, and also propose a different uh, rating. Uh, the incredible thing uh, is that 99% um, of the time, the uh, self-evaluation and the self-proposal is then confirmed by the entire team because it's really based on real data and evidence. Uh, after three years, uh, we were able to uh, collect a lot of data about the HR team effectiveness and performance. You can see three different uh, uh, tables here. The first one um, is the Nestle and I survey, Nespresso and I survey. It's an annual survey where we uh, measure uh, how people feel in terms of uh, engagement, uh, enablement, uh, um, efficiency and empowerment. 
And uh, as you can see, uh, it's always green, of course, but also is uh, plus uh, 40 uh, uh, point percentage uh, higher respect to uh, all other uh, department. Then the second uh, table is uh, what we call the PDP quality check, is a um, survey that we do three times a year and we measure uh, how much people have clear in mind their objective for the year, how much they feel confident to uh, reach them and how much they feel supported uh, from uh, their uh, organization. Uh, in, in this survey, as you can see, we uh, have a very, very high score plus uh, 16 uh, point percentage higher than uh, all the other uh, department. Uh, the same thing is uh, also related to the evaluation. Uh, HR has uh, the highest number of good performer compared to other team. And of course, these ratings are calibrating uh, together with uh, other department. Um, so the results were so encouraging uh, after uh, one year and a half, a couple of years that we decided to shift more team to equity. Uh, we have now implemented the equacy uh, practices in half of the Nespresso head office team. And the, I mean, the journey is on the way and we will continue with the entire uh, organization. Thank you very much, Simona. Now I would like to uh, invite uh, the participants to uh, have a little bit of reflections and uh, ask questions, but before that, uh, I saw in the chat a, a, a number of comments saying ah. that it's, it's very similar to Olacracy. And I would like to share something about it. Uh, when uh, uh, my business partner and I in 2017 started to investigate on the impact of the systems on the behavior of, of uh, people, of employees, uh, of course, we did a lot of research about you know, what was available. And to be honest, I also became uh, an holacracy facilitator because I thought that, uh, you know, why reinventing the wheel when, you know, something already exists. Uh, then I, I, I mentioned that uh, we come from, you know, our roots are uh, in the human potential movement. And unfortunately, I have to say after the training uh, in holacracy, um, I found that holacracy is very much procedural based and also uh, it was thought of, it was invented with an underlying paradigm, which is the, the company, the organization is a computer, uh, probably because of the uh, experience of Brian. Um, so, you know, if, if you have the correct procedure, things will work. With our uh, experience in uh, change management and with uh, you know, this, this ten tendency to put the human being at the center, we thought um, that that would not be the paradigm for us. So we prefer to adopt the paradigm of uh, the organization as a living system. So even if some of the practices are uh, similar that we, you know, we really, uh, you know, utilize some of the uh, ideas that Brian uh, brought that were the you know, Nostra ideas anyway. Um, we, you know, the difference is not met much in the practices of, uh, of equity, but the, 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 the idea is more, the difference is on the mindset and in the fact that the human beings being part of the company, they can take themselves wholly, wholly to work. Uh, you know that in, uh, for, for those of you who have been training in, in Olacracy, uh, the constant decision-making is about, you know, uh, not bringing emotions in the, in the, in the team uh, and also uh, making sure that people stop talking when the, the objection is not um, in line. So we didn't take you know, all the practices and uh, put it in practice as they were because you know, they needed some adjustment uh, to make sure that human is at the center. And another little piece about, but for us is really important um, of difference is that uh, even in, uh, in accuracy, there is a hierarchy. It's a hierarchy of teams. Uh, so there is still some subordination, some higher teams can make decisions on the lower teams. 
uh, we wanted to avoid all of that. So there's nobody uh, or no function, no role that can decide for other roles. Um, so this, these are the, the major um, differences. But now I would like to invite you to a small group conversation and uh, um, Rodek, you know, please, please be prepared to open the, uh, the, the breakout rooms. Um, I would like to invite you in small groups to have a reflection on what did you find interesting in the Nespresso uh, case? Uh, and also what is still there uh, needed to be asked to further your understanding. So you will have like 12 minutes uh, to have these conversations and we will, you will come back and we will uh, um, have a question and answer session. Well, that can you, can you send people in the, in yes, the rooms? Yes, I can. Yes, Fantastic. I will. Thank you very much. We have Bernadette that is saying that she's not put in a room. Okay. And also Eliana. Mm -hmm. And also Carol. Okay. And I'm back. There wasn't anybody in the room. I think all the ah, okay. we <laughs> can see are still here. Yeah. Now, why are well, it seems, uh, Ronak, can you uh, confirm that the rooms are not really working well because we can change very quickly? <clears throat> I, I just noticed it and I am not sure. Okay, let's leave it. Don't How, worry. What to do but about it? I'm sorry no about problem. that. <laughs> no problem. Let's do this. Let's do. Let me uh, stop the uh, the sharing and let's have just a, a conversation. So, uh, yeah, tell, tell us your comments uh, and uh, and questions. Whenever you're ready, just raise your hand and we'll uh, invite you to share. Yeah, that's a good solution. <laughs> okay. I don't know if it, if it's the common problem, but in my room, no one was talking. So ah, okay, that's okay. 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 Yeah. So so maybe to break the ice, Giovanna and yeah, and thank Mona, you. I, I would be uh, quite interested to experience this change from you know the more old-minded com command control to to self-organized. Um, organization has much to do with trust. What is your experience in this journey with regard to trust? And what I mean is a little bit, you know, as you said, you need a certain, uh, let's say, decent level of trust to even start such a journey. And the, the, the other question would be, you know, what, what happened to the trust building in the team? For example, you know, if, if you say, well, we share all our feedback, you know, I, I assume you share also the negative feedback, right? And imagine in, in an old organization, you know, that, that is very much fear associated. So these are my two questions, you know, trust, 
question mark and and how the trust developed in the journey well i would i would start by saying that trust is really key starting from the relationship between the, the consultant and the client uh, there must be trust in us as guides through the, this process uh, and there must be trust in the process itself uh, if Simona didn't trust the process, it, it would be impossible to, to move forward. Um, and then, uh, well, we have, been, we have worked with, with uh, Simona's teams for many years. So in a way, people were already kind of prepared to, for, for example, to a certain amount of transparency, to a certain amount of openness. Um, so it was... Um, not complicated, I would say, uh, but it, it was, you know, trust is key in this kind of, uh, you know, shift. Uh, Simona, do you want to add something? Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> trust, uh, I, I mean, at the beginning, everyone is a bit scared. They don't know what will happen, uh, but then day after day, uh, the, the people that are more involved, that, that were the manager, have to demonstrate that something changed. So for example, the feedback is that one of the most difficult part, especially in, in our Italian culture. Uh, I, I mean, I last, last, uh, last month I gave myself a one that is the lowest <laughs> rating possible because I did something that no one of my team saw. Uh, so I told them, uh, and every time I receive a uh, feedback um, that can be good or bad, uh, my reaction is was uh, now it's okay. It's not even more uh, an issue, of course. Uh, I mean, a uh, uh, thanks. So in, in every step, uh, the most important thing is that the old manager need to show that they react differently. So it's really important, especially in the first two months, uh, really to be really- Role models. Uh, yes, role yeah. model of, uh, of any practice, you know? Give the space. Uh, if a decision is taken, is taken, and you <laughs> cannot do anything and change, and you have to uh, demonstrate that you cope with that change. So uh, for sure, it's not something that happened like, like this, but day after day, uh, they uh, trust. And for example, one of the things that happened, and it was really, um, for me, amazing, uh, three weeks ago, one of, my, uh, of, one of the people of our HR team had the courage to say to the team that uh, she was not able to do the job. So she said to everyone, hey, guys, half of the things that I should do, I'm not able to do it. Without any fear to be uh, attacked or uh, judged uh, and so on. So means that uh, after uh, uh, this time, everyone uh, uh, trusts each other. Roberto. Hi. Uh, my question is, is about uh, organization. I, I come from sociocracy. In sociocracy, we have a hierarchy of uh, aims. Um, I, I look at your cover, uh, Giovanna. I, I hadn't the time to read your book, but I see a sort of fractal tree. Uh, how are uh, the, the teams organized? And uh, did you... How did you manage the the need to have uh, mm, I, I don't know regional teams and functional teams at the same time? Okay. Um, well, in the you know if you have the, the the picture in front of you of the of the all the little balls, uh, you can see that there are different colors. Uh, there is a, a one central uh, team that we call the source team. Uh, where there are, well, first of all, the people who needs to, I mean, to, to be there from a legal standpoint. So we still need to have a um, managing director or some, you know, a representative that uh, is responsible for the whole organization. Um, and all the uh, key uh, roles that needs to be there. Uh, 
the function is the aligning and, and helping the collaboration of the whole system. Uh, then we have the, uh, the red teams, the, the teams in red, uh, which are the uh, operational teams. They are the ones that uh, op produce something for the, for the external world or, or do something that is needed for the external world. Um, and they can you know, be single teams or they can be grouped in a, in a <clears throat> you know, more than one team uh, and they are linked together by a coordination team. The coordination team is not hierarchically, uh, hierarchically uh, over them because it's made by representatives of the, uh, of the single teams. Uh, probably you will notice that there are little dots inside the, 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 the team and little dots inside the, the source team. These are the, <clears throat> the these are, uh, represents the roles that uh, are in charge of connecting one team to the other. So there is, you know, I don't know, for example, the members of, uh, let's say, the um, one member of the marketing team who is the link to the source team so they can bring the uh, you know, the, the, the important issues of the team in a broader uh, context. And again, uh, conversely, there is one member of the source team that can, uh, um, you know, join the, the, the marketing team uh, meetings uh, to make sure that there is alignment between, you know, the different parts of the company. So there are all these uh, elements. Uh, in blue, you can see the service teams. The service teams are the teams that support the uh, operational teams. So these are the function, the, the staff function, for example. But it doesn't mean that the staff functions are all there because you may have, this is a, a personal choice of uh, each organization. You may have one cross uh, dimensional team that has inside somebody who has the role of, for example, uh, people development instead of having one, uh, uh, one separate team that has the responsibility of people development for the whole organization. So it depends a lot on uh, um, the, uh, you know, what is more uh, functional for any kind of organization. Does, does that help, uh, Roberto? Yeah, you're on mute. Yes, uh, I, I was asking it because I don't know if you already uh, managed uh, manage to uh, extend the model to different regions inside Nespresso or only in Italy. So uh, there, there, there is no uh, duplication between uh, different regions. No, for the moment, we are working in, uh, in Nespresso Italy and we are working, uh, you know, we are building uh, operational team by operational teams or service team by service team. Uh, you know, when it will be the time, you know, when it comes, we'll need, we will need to uh, create the links between all the single teams. Thank you very much. And Eliana. Yes, so first, thank you so much for sharing your, your journey uh, so far. I have been having a look at Equacy and how it works or what the main description is. And I saw, I've seen uh, you have like four um, easy steps to implement the, the framework. And always when I hear something like that, I get suspicious, but I, I'm really eager to, to, to understand a bit better what are those uh, four steps. Well, it's not steps, there are phases. Uh, as you know, uh, Simona told you, you know, it, it took nine months uh, to implement uh, the equacy. Um, so let's say that for us in, in, in our uh, experience with big organizations, we know that there is, a, we need to create a staging phase uh, where we, you know, get prepared, measure the readiness of the organization or the team, uh, bring people on board, uh, having all you know the the key decision maker uh, key stakeholders aligned, etc. So there is a a phase that is preparation. It's not easy. <laughs> I didn't I didn't call it easy. Um, so the, the bigger is the organization, the difficult it is. Um, then the the second step is about um, helping the organization to redesign itself. 
Um, so, uh, you know, again, the, the, the bigger it is, the more complex it becomes because we don't, we don't come to the, the, to the company and say, we know what is the best uh, design for you, but, you know, we are facilitators and we facilitate this. Um, and it's not about only about the structure, it's, only, uh, it's also about uh, how do you want, you know, what are the principles of this organization, what are the overall, what is the overall purpose, what, what you know, so the, um, we seek the contribution of as many people as possible, but this is the foundational part. The, the third part is about, the, in a way, the training, we need to help people to really uh, change mindset, but also uh, acquire the competencies and, and the, the, the skills to make it work. Uh, and so again, it, it could be pretty complex. And the, 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 the last steps is, is uh, um, a phase of continuously measurement, uh, evaluation and test and uh, re redesign or re, you know, uh, redefine so this is uh, the, 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 let's say, the, the four phases in, in uh, simple terms. You will find more in, in the book, of course. Thank you so much. And Thank they you. are not simple. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. Thank you so much. <laughs> and Lisa. Hello, uh, this is Lisa from China. Uh, actually, I do not have the, uh, you know, those um, uh, practices uh, you shared. Here is a um, very interesting is about the evaluation rating. Actually, you mentioned the evaluation rating uh, discussed by the whole team. I'm very curious about how big, what is the size of the team? So my this is- team, very, My yeah. team is 20 people. So every team uh, discuss among themselves so, and say, yeah. Actually, the evaluation uh, rating gonna be discussed among 20 people, or 20 yeah. employees. Yeah, mm -hmm. so and every then, person arrive in the meeting having all the data, of course, the OKR mm -hmm. and so on, that are not new for the team members, because uh -huh. of course we they are public. And in general, every time we do like a survey after a, an important project or initiative, we use to share with the team in the weekly meeting how the survey went and discuss uh, doing like a post evaluation. So we know, for example, okay, we did this uh, project uh, this year and uh, I received the rate uh, of three uh, out of five. Mm -hmm. The um, things that uh, people uh, are uh, telling us are one, two, three, and we discuss to make it better next time. So in general, everyone arrives in the room having um, a quite precise idea of how the project went and how the each team member performed because all the feedback are public. Uh, this is why it can be, a, it's a one day um, meeting. Process, yeah. yeah. And uh, everyone um, present uh, the, the data and the rating and all the other can uh, add, uh, ask uh, or uh, ask for change. So it's quite simple, not easy, uh, especially the first time it was very uh, strange uh, to discuss in, in the audience with a big audience. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, let's say year after year, it's becoming even more, uh, how can I say, um, natural. Uh, and uh, the discussion become less uh, uh, long and uh, everyone, arrive with the, already a very good idea of uh, how the matrix will be in a way. Mm -hmm. uh, so in this case, the, uh, you give the performance rating. Is this a performance rating uh, given by, I know it, it should be self-estimated uh, self uh, rating also. Uh, do you have the rating provided by the co-workers? Among this, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's that's why it's not a self-estimated. The, the, the data we put together are the OKR, that means did you reach or not the objectives? So very number. Then you have all the survey you did after the project, that uh, the important project of the year. So from your stakeholders, 
So um, internal client, uh, project team, uh, depending on the project. Uh, so, then of course you have the feedbacks from okay. the team and also external to the team. And at the end of the year, we also do like a survey that is based on role. So our stakeholders rate us on the effectiveness of our role. So it's a big, big amount of data and it's not done by myself. So it's not a self-evaluation. It's um, numbers that I collected during the year in a proper way, in a very mm -hmm. serious way. I see. Thank you. So in that Thank you. Sorry, Lisa. I need to. I need to make sure that also other people ask questions because we are a little bit monopolizing. The <laughs> okay, got it. Sorry, sorry. But send send us <clears throat> send me a, a a question in the chat and, and your email, and I will uh, answer you. Uh, you know, separately. Antonio. Okay. Uh, uh, good afternoon, Simona. Simona, have you considered, as I put on the, on the chat, have you considered completely abandoning the performance evaluation process? Ah, uh, yes. Did you, did you anticipate any challenges, uh, Grazie mille. I really, to be honest with you, I'm, I'm, I'm really thinking about that. We, uh, I mean, in reality, we, we are already doing something like this. So we need this matrix and this evaluation because Nestlé, that is the group, uh, needs this data. And because for our career, it's important to, uh, you know, uh, monitor and put in the system our annual evaluation. In reality, apart from the final evaluation, we could, in a way, eliminate already the, the ratings because we have all the data needed. So it's like more uh, uh, self-managing performance thanks to the data that we collect. So we, we in reality, don't need this final uh, evaluation based on the fact that we already have a lot of uh, uh, data. It's not easy, but uh, I'm more than open to um, exchange ideas with uh, other people on how we can uh, do differently. I totally hate this one, two, three model. Thanks, Millie. Thanks. Uh, we have two minutes more. Uh, Chris. You're on mute. Thank yes. You. Okay. Uh, yeah, so I guess um, I'm really interested in this teal bubble within what is presumably an orange organization. I mean, Nestle, the parent company, perhaps one of the definitive orange organizations in the world. So what are the challenges of creating this teal bubble within an organization that it perhaps doesn't share the same mindset and particularly around purpose? How do you align the purpose of the team with a very different corporate purpose uh, and, and make it meaningful and, and inspiring? Yeah. In reality, we needed to keep some official role because we are in this ecosystem. So I go to some specific event because I'm the HR director uh, in, in any case for them. So it's like, uh, I mean, create really a bubble where things uh, work like this and uh, try to keep only the links that really make us uh, possible to have an interaction. Uh, so in reality, we didn't uh, implement the full, full uh, system that you will read in the, in the book or you have uh, read in the book. We need to keep some, something like hierarchy with the external uh, yeah. stakeholders. Yeah, thank you. Okay, we got to two sharp. Um, so uh, I, I'm sorry, Paulina. Um, I think then I need to be strict with the with the timing. So I really thank you, everyone, for for you know joining us. Um, we had you know Simone and I had a beautiful time with you. Yeah. Uh, and any other question, just you know drop drop us an email, send us a message, uh, reach us on, on LinkedIn, or whatever. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you, everyone. Thanks. Thank, thank you. you. Thanks thank a lot. You. Thank you. Thank you.